report it to your Lordships with amendments. Second reading of the live music bill, Lord Clement Jones. My Lords, I beg to move that this bill be now read a second time. My Lords, I believe passionately in live music. I went to the Brits recently uh, in what I hope will be their permanent new home, uh, the O2. It was a stunning experience and it confirmed in my totally unbiased view that British musical talent is the best in the world and that we must do everything we can to encourage its development. Clearly, this is a view shared by the coalition government, who pledged in the coalition agreement to cut the red tape involved in live music performance. The Licensing Act 2003, I'm afraid to say, introduced by the previous government, however, created a bureaucratic minefield which has stifled creativity and prohibited innocent and innocuous live music events from taking place. Even the provision, my lords, of musical instruments without a license became a criminal offence. But, my lords, despite some encouraging discussions with the minister, my honourable friend John Penrose, we are still awaiting the outcome of interdepartmental discussions about how to achieve the objectives of the coalition agreement. And I welcome the fact that John Whittingdale MP, chairman of the Culture, Media and Sports Select Committee, who is as impatient as I am for reform, has now tabled an EDM in the other place asking for an exemption for small venues to be introduced without delay. So it is today that I am moving the second reading of what I believe is a new and improved live music bill designed to reduce the red tape surrounding the performance of live music, particularly in small venues, in the hope and expectation that it will receive an explicitly positive response from government, my government. In 2002, the previous government introduced the licensing bill and promised that this would make it much easier to host live music. At the time of its passage, ministers were confident of the likely impact of the act. The noble Lord, Lord Mackintosh of Haringey, who we remember so well, then DCMS spokesperson in the House of Lords, told this House on 26 of November 2002. My view is that there will be an explosion of live music as a result of removing the discriminatory two-in-a-bar provision. In fact, the bill significantly increased entertainment licensing control over live music. Among other things, it abolished the two-in-a-bar rule, a long-standing exemption in pubs and bars for two performers. In effect, this became a none-in-the-bar rule. Under most public performances and many pr private performances uh, under the bill, uh, music, they need a license. Liberal Democrats opposed these changes on the grounds that separate legislation was already more than adequate to regulate most small-scale performances and that criminalising such performances, unless licensed, was unnecessarily and disproportionate. I'm very glad to see my noble friend Lord Reedsdale in the House today taking part in the debate. We forced defeats on the government in the House of Lords, creating exemptions for incidental music and certain small-scale performances. Naively, perhaps, in the subsequent ping-pong, we accepted a new clause to the bill, section 177, uh, which the government put forward and appeared to be an exemption for live music in certain small venues. In 2003, the bill received royal assent and became an Act of Parliament. As feared, the Licensing Act has not delivered an increase in live music, despite these promises. Back in July 2007, the Live Music Forum, which had been set up in 2005 by the then Minister, now the Noble Baroness, Lady Morris of Yardley, published their findings and recommendations on the impact of the Licensing Act 2003 on live music. The LMF concluded that while the new law had a broadly neutral effect, the Act did harm certain small local venues and recommended an outright exemption for these. The LMF also reported a huge disparity in local authorities' interpretation of the law when issuing licenses, and that the promised increase in live music had not occurred. In fact, it found that 29% of smaller establishments that had previously operated without a public entertainment license but used the two-in-a-bar exemption to put on live music did not apply for live music provision when the new Act came into force. In particular, the Live Music Forum called for the reform of Section 177. 
The LMF argued that the current wording contained in the Act is convoluted and in many respects totally impenetrable. The Forum was unable to find a single example where Section 177 was actually used by licensing officers or venue owners. So the Forum recommended new exemptions for small gigs as a matter of some urgency. The LMF's report was followed in December 2007 by a BRMB survey commissioned by the DCMS on the impact of the Licensing Act on live music, which concluded that there had been a 5% decrease in the provision of live music in secondary live music venues since the benchmark Morris survey of 2004. But in restaurants and cafes, the figures were a drop of 12%, and in church halls and community centres, 24%. As a result, the Secretary of State, by then James Plenell, pledged to explore exemptions for some venues, but despite assurances by the government, this was put on the back burner. In July 2008, the House of Commons DCMS Select Committee launched an inquiry into the Licensing Act, and in May 2009 they concluded in their report that the Act hampered live music performances, especially by young musicians. The committee recommended an exemption for venues up to 200 capacity and the reintroduction of the two-in-the-bar exemption, which existed prior to the 2003 Act. As the chairman, Mr John Whittingale, of whom I've referred to earlier, my honourable friend John Whittingale rightly said, young musicians often get their first break through performing live at small venues. The government, however, continued, the then government, however, continued to put their faith in the minor variations procedure. But as I have made clear in the debate on the 15th of June 2009 on a motion to regret the government's decision to proceed with the draft legislative reform order, minor variations to an existing license are no substitute for a new small venues exemption under the Act. Indeed, the DCMS itself in its evidence to the Regulatory Reform Committee included in the committee's second report warned that many live music applications would not qualify as a minor variation. And my noble friend, the noble Lord Howard of Rising, pointed out rightly at the time that the burden on social and sports club and the fact that the words adverse effect could be used by local authorities to unreasonably reject applications. And my lords, the minor variation process itself is extraordinarily bureaucratic. And in the event the minor variations order has failed to benefit the thousands of events in venues that are not already licensed under the Act. The absurdities and inconsistencies of the Licensing Act generally in respect of live music are manifest. The interpretation varies widely from local authority to local authority, with some taking a lenient view of incidental music and others a much more restrictive approach. And there are many examples of licensing authorities imposing or allowing to be imposed absurd restrictions on live music. For instance, the number of musicians allowed to perform, the genre of music or the type of musical instrument they may play, restrictions on under 18 year olds listening to live music, the days of the week they may perform and the frequency with which they may perform. Some premises are required to leaflet the surrounding area, warning residents of impending live music events. And some local authorities have issued no premises license for public spaces, effectively banning live music in public. Many of us recall the fact that the provision of 30 pianos in London streets under the Play Me, I'm Your scheme was caught by the Licensing Act as a provision of an entertainment facility. Without a license from the local authority, the organisers would have been committing a potentially criminal offence.